So the twisting of the truth by the enemy, man's desire to be in control and take the credit, and the world's desire to unify and fix the problem of spiritual death without God. That's always going to be prevalent in society. It may, it may wane for a while, but eventually it's going to rear its ugly head once again. And sometimes the three of these things combine in such a way that the actual result may surprise you. It can sometimes take on what the Bible calls a form of godliness. A form of godliness. It looks right. Turn to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, is that how you would describe godliness, a form of godliness? That's not how I'd describe a form of godliness. But yet Paul is telling Timothy that all of these descriptives will be present, and yet verse 5 says, the very next verse, holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. They hold to a form of godliness, but there is no supernatural God-given power within it. And then he says, avoid such men as these. So in other words, Timothy, there will be a time when many will stand up and claim to have the truth. And they're going to promote a form of salvation. It's going to look like godliness. It's going to sound right. And they may even say the right things and they may even use the same uh, the, the right phrases and terminology in what they're saying. But it is devoid of God. It is devoid of power. And therefore, while they say things like love one another, while they seek world peace and accepting everyone and everything that they do, they may even have good intentions. But don't be fooled, Timothy. It's only a form of godliness. It has no real power. But Timothy... We preach and teach the real deal. We have the power. As he said in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, you all have probably memorized this verse. Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So today there's another gospel being preached in our churches and out in the world. It's just now starting to infiltrate our churches and it goes by the name of social justice. And I was talking to a pastor friend this week and he said, strange, isn't it? Because believers, we sh- as believers, we should seek justice and we should do justice. Absolutely. But remember that just because they're using the right terminology does not mean it's the spirit of what God intended justice to be. We need His justice in the world. Eleven years ago, I heard a a radio personality say, quote, "If if you attend a church that promotes social justice and they use that terminology, run. That was 11 years ago. And I didn't realize at that time really what, what he was talking about. But it's a form of godliness grounded in man's political agenda and in humanism and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's being attached to the church now. And there's a book recently out called Woke Church. And it's attached to the gospel in very subtle ways, using the right terminology to infiltrate, but meaning very different things. And now, if you aren't woke, are you even a Christian? If you aren't fighting for social justice, do you even know Jesus? Right? This is the world's attempt to get the church or anyone who disagrees to accept any and all lifestyles and all behavior in the name of justice. The world's going to act like the world. You need to understand that. 
The body of Christ needs to understand the world is going to act like the sinful, dead world. Today, I'm talking to the church. I can't do anything about the world, and and neither can you. We can't do anything about the way they act and the things they do. God can, and He did everything He could do, and there's a way, and we're going to talk about it. But today, I'm talking to you, the church, the body of Christ. Social justice as political activism is the current gospel of fig leaves within the body of Christ, and especially in America. There are some very dangerous issues with it. I want you to pay attention. They've replaced evangelism with what's called virtue signaling, all right? So what is virtue signaling? It's publicly announcing your stance on a moral high ground by expressing your opinion or sentiment to show everyone that you are a part, you agree with the moral mob. Whatever it is, hashtag Cecil the Lion, hashtag Coney 2012, right? Y'all remember those? Y'all remember those? It was everywhere. And, and basically, you get it, and you're going to boldly stand up and courageously tell everyone else that you agree with them. <laughs> Boldness and, and courage, as I was brought up, was most of the time swimming against the stream. It was going against the flow, but now apparently courage is agreeing with everyone and boldly proclaiming on, on Instagram or whatever the case In so doing, it kind of, sort of is meant to shame everyone and anyone who disagrees, okay? So you proclaim this thing, and and if you don't agree, then you're publicly shamed, okay? We're going to shame you into our moral way of thinking, even though your morality is not based in biblical morality. It's humanistic morality. It's fig leaves. They replace, number two, they replace theology with victimology. They replace theology with victimology. Everyone gets offended. Everyone is a victim. And there are so many oppressed. Can I tell you there have been oppressed people from the dawn of creation? We constantly talk about how offended and oppressed we are. It works people up into a frenzy. And instead of taking uh, or talking... They finally begin to take action, and then we see events unfold like we've seen the last five or six years in our society, things that I never thought I would see in the United States of America, cars burning, businesses trashed, people getting beat in the street, all that stuff, okay? Number three, political activists replace pastors, and social justice warriors replace the body of Christ. Being woke replaces being born again, becoming a new creation. Penance replaces repentance. Now, this is huge, and this is what makes this so diabolical, all right? The gospel proclaims that there is no one righteous, not even one. It is an individual salvation. If you humble yourself and admit to God that you are a sinful man or woman, and you are set apart or separated from God, dead apart from Him, desperate for Him, Jesus will take that individual and wash him white as snow. He throws your sin as far as the east is from the west, the Bible says, and when you repent, you are forgiven of your sin once for all. That's the gospel, all right? Social justice form of godliness proclaims that you are guilty because you're affiliated with those who have somehow oppressed various groups, okay? And to make it right, you must renounce your privilege, even though you may have had absolutely nothing to do with anything. You must renounce your privilege. You must denounce your actions in the past that may have offended or oppressed some various part of these oppressed groups. You may unwittingly be a part of a group that of oppressors without knowing it, and you don't even know you're an oppressor, but you are, and you're still guilty, and you still stand condemned. So they expect penance, and if you admit it and grovel before them and say, okay, we, we, I admit it, I'm terrible, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, humble yourself before the social justice mob, for today you will be accepted. But if two years from now, 
something sparks the mob once again. Something else happens that sets the activists into action. If any new groups who feel they are oppressed pop up, you must accept their lifestyle, their preferences, their identity, and then grovel and seek penance once again. It never ends. It's a cycle of guilt and shame, often for things that you have had absolutely no control over, just being where you are, whatever. And there is no end game. There's no solution. There's no salvation. There's, there's nothing, there's no hope in this. Humanity is the only hope and the best that humanity can do. It will never really be solved. And the only answer is for you to live in the knowledge of how oppressive you are and just stay there. Stay in that knowledge, live in that guilt and shame, and that's what it means. Elevate people who are oppressed above you and that will somehow make it right. It is a form of godliness, and it's, as I said, infiltrating the American church. There is therefore now a ton of condemnation in the woke church, okay? A ton of condemnation. You will stay condemned, and, you, and, and that is the way you will live, all right? It is a gospel of fig leaves. It is man's attempt to sew together fig leaves to, to fix the problem of death, of spiritual death. And I didn't realize how dangerous it was in the past, but I certainly do now as we see the fruit of it in our lives now daily. It is humanism. And it has no place in the body of Christ. It has no place in the church. Amen? Why? Because it denies the transformative, supernatural power of Jesus Christ and the cross and the power of the resurrection, which we all have in us. That gospel reconciles a lost, sinful, eternally dead person to God. One who walked in darkness now walks in the light. That's the beautiful gospel. That's the gospel truth. There is nothing man can offer to fix the world's death problem. Nothing. Nothing to rec reconcile the hatred and the wickedness that we see on display right now in our world. And not just now in our world, but you can go all the way back again to the book of Genesis and see it play out there. It's not new, young people. It's not new. This is not a new revelation for your generation. This has been around for ages and ages and ages. The fruit of this false religion is not unity. This is what you need to understand. It's disruption. It's chaos. It's violence, it's destabilization, and their goal is to hit it and hit it, hit society over and over again. Every time a crisis comes up, they will not let that crisis go to waste. They're going to keep whipping everybody up into a frenzy, and eventually, hopefully, the entire system collapses, and then these, uh, those who are in power within this social justice movement can remake society in their own image. That's the goal. Make no mistake. And while they say it's a society of acceptance, it's, it's accepting everyone who agrees with them. And I can promise you this. It's contrary to the Word of God. They're not going to agree with what the Word of God says. It's the image of Babel, a humanistic human government devoid of God and His supernatural hand in the lives of men and women. They think what they're doing is right, and that's important to understand. Again, it's a form of godliness with no power. But see, we, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, we have the answer. We have the real answer. It's not a counterfeit. We've got the truth. 